In today's video, I'm gonna share some of the best features in DaVinci Resolve 19. And these are features that I almost use on a daily basis. It is a lot of features, so I'm gonna sprint through them all. But if you wanna check out the full tutorial on how to use it properly, you can check out the full tutorials on this playlist over here. And by the way, if you are visiting for the first time, welcome, my name is Duan, it's do unto others what you want, do unto yourself. And on this channel, we talk all about DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. At number one, we have Superscale. Now, Superscale allows you to upscale HD footage either to 4K or 8K according to DaVinci Resolve. You simply go to the inspector window, go to Superscale, activate Superscale, and you can either enhance it times two or times four. And number two, Ultra Noise Reduction. This is DaVinci's AI tool that helps you to reduce a lot of noise without reducing the clip's quality. Simply go to the Effects tab, look for noise reduction, drag it onto your clip. In the inspector window, go to effects and under effects, under mode, go to ultra noise reduction. Click analyze and it will analyze your footage to reduce noise. Number three, Film Look Creator. You can now use this powerful tool to create epic film looks on your footage. Simply go to the color page, search for Film Look Creator, drag it onto the line to create a node. And under this node, you can play around with the settings and create epic film looks. Number four, Smooth Cut. If you wanna create seamless transitions between cuts of an interview, you can go to Effects, Smooth Cut, drag it onto your footage and reduce the length of it. This way, it will create a seamless transition between two clips and make it look like it doesn't have a cut. Number five, annotations. If you wanna draw on your footage to remind yourself of something or to show another editor something, you can simply go to the transform window over here and activate annotations. On top of your program window, you'll see there's extra options. You can click the pen tool and simply draw on the area that you wanna bring attention to. That will also create a marker. And if you want this drawing to show up for a certain length, you can simply alt click and drag this marker. And for the whole duration of that marker, that drawing will appear on your clip. Number six, cutscene detection. If you imported a whole project into DaVinci Resolve and you wanna break it up into separate clips, no problem, you can go to timeline, detect cutscenes, it will analyze your footage and break it up into separate clips. Number seven, show duplicate frames. When working with bigger projects, it's really easy to overlook duplicate frames on your timeline. So to avoid that, go to view, activate show duplicate frames and the duplicate frames will have these highlighted areas on top of them. Number eight, voice isolation. If you've got a clip with a lot of background noise, you can get rid of that background noise by selecting the clip, go to the inspector window under the audio tab, activate voice isolation. Here you can adjust the amount that you want isolated. If you want to add voice isolation to the whole channel, no problem, you can go to the Fairlight page. Under the Fairlight page, you can go to the channel where you wanna add it to, enable voice isolation, and you can go to the control settings to adjust the amount that you want on to the channel. At number nine, we've got Powerbins. Now, Powerbins is a really cool tool that allows you to store media like graphics, audio, timelines in a bin, a power bin, and that allows you to have the same media open in every other project that you open. And when you do need to use it again, you can simply drag it from your power bin onto the timeline. At number 10, we've got smart bins. Now you can look at smart bins like a filtering system. If you want to access all the timelines in your project, you can simply click timelines and you'll see every timeline that you've created in your project. And you can create custom keywords or groups for each project. Number 11, speed ramping. Speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve is really easy. Simply select the clip that you want to speed ramp, press Command R to open up the properties, go to the point where you want the speed ramp to start, press this drop down, select Add Point. Go to the part where you want to stop the speed ramp, again, select 
at speed point and you can simply drag those speed points to each other or away from each other to slow-mo your footage. At number 12 you can create super smooth slow-mo footage using optical flow. Now usually when you slow down your footage significantly like this clip which is at 40% you see a stutter when you play back your footage. Now to avoid that go to the inspector window and under retime and scaling at retime process select optical flow. This will create super smooth slow-mo footage. At number 13, you can stabilize any footage in DaVinci Resolve. Simply select your clip, go to the inspector window, under stabilization, you can adjust the parameters and select stabilize. And now you can enjoy stabilized footage. At number 14, you might have assets that you want to flip horizontally or vertically. And if you want to do that, you can simply go to your inspector window in the transform panel. You can either flip it horizontally or vertically. In number 15, you can change almost any color in DaVinci Resolve. Simply go to the color page. In the color page, select the qualifier. And with the qualifier, you can select a range of colors that you want to change. After you're done selecting the colors, you can go to the curves panel. And under curves, you can select hue versus hue and click and drag to the preferred color of your choice. At number 16, we've got color match. Now, if you've got two different clips with two different color balances, you can match these shots in the color page. You can select the shot that you want to adjust, right click on the shot that you want to adjust it to, go down to ma shot match to this clip, and it will match the color grade all and the color space of the other clip. Number 17, we've got time stretch, which allows you to actually drag out your footage to fill a certain space. Now, if you do have a short clip that you can't drag out, no problem, you can just hit Command R and drag it out here on the top bar to fill that space. As you drag it out, you'll see that the percentage goes down and you can simply hit Command R again to return to the normal state. At number 18, you can now use markers to indicate sections on your timeline. Now, instead of just adding one marker, which is maybe a chapter marker, you can alt and drag this marker to indicate a section on your timeline. That way it's easier for you to see what's happening on your timeline. Now at number 19, you can now join clips that you unintentionally cut during an edit. So say this interview or any clip for that matter that you accidentally cut, you can simply select the clips that you want to rejoin and press Alt Backspace. And that will rejoin the clip once again to one full clip instead of many parts. Now at number 20, if you want to auto transcribe your footage, no problem. You can simply go to this icon over here and select that. That will go through your footage and automatically analyze it and transcribe it. At number 21, you can create auto subtitles for your video. Select the clip that you want to create subtitles for, go to timeline and select create subtitles from audio. Go through the settings and select create. That will analyze your audio and add in auto subtitles. Now, this isn't perfect, but it's a good place to start and you only need to make a couple of changes. At number 22, you can now turn a mono track into a stereo track. If you've got a mono track that's put on a stereo track and when you play it, you can see only one channel is coming through. If you want to turn that into a stereo track, simply right click the audio, select clip attributes and the clip attributes under audio you can now change the format to stereo and it will automatically add the same channel onto the other side when you select ok and you play it back you'll see that now it comes out of both sides at number 23 you can easily create freeze frames in your project if you play through your footage and you have a nice frame that you want throughout the video you can simply cut it at that point and select the clip and hit shift R, and that will create a freeze frame for that whole duration.
At number 24, you can tell DaVinci Resolve to render your footage in the background. Now, you might have footage that you add effects to and it doesn't want to play in real time. If that happens, no problem. You can simply go to playback and under render cache, you can select smart. And that way, DaVinci Resolve will render out your footage while you are busy editing. At number 25, when you want to create reels out of your 16x9 footage, you can go to the guides button over here and under the drop down, you can select the format that you want the guides to be. So if I want to create 9x16 reels, you can see that the guide will appear and now I can actually go ahead and position my footage within that guide. Now at number 26, we've got Smart Reframe. Now if you've got a 16x9 clip here that you want to convert down to a 9x16 and your subject is moving in and out of a frame like this, you can now reframe it so that your subject stays in the frame at all times. Simply go to the inspector window under Smart Reframe, you can select a reference point and with this reference point, you can select the subject. Click reframe and after the reframe, when you play back your clip, your subject will stay in the middle during the whole duration of that clip. And lastly, dynamic zoom. So if you've got still images in your project and you want to add some Ken Burns effect to it, no problem. You can go to the inspector window and activate dynamic zoom. So on default, it will zoom out. So you can just swap that direction. And in the transform window over here, you can go to dynamic zoom and this red square here, will show you how far it zooms in so you can adjust that or you can even move the frames around depending on whether you want it to zoom in to a certain location or not. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.